Social Zoom Factor, episode 189. Driving results in business these days takes something special. It's a combination of the right info and the right energy. Pam Moore has both and is here to help you avoid the pitfalls and guide your business and life by leveraging and integrating social media, powerful branding, and digital marketing. Welcome to Social Zoom Factor. Now it's time to live life zoomed. Does your current website or blog got you down? Do you need a better hosting platform to help your business zoom turbo versus speeds that are slow and holding you back? No need to look any further than our partner HostGator. Have an existing site? No worries. They can seamlessly transfer your existing site for free and have you zooming turbo in no time for as little as $4 a month. Check them out at HostGator.com and save 30% on new hosting packages using the coupon code Zoom or simply go to SocialZoomFactor.com slash host gator. The Marketing Nuts Agency helps companies transform their social and digital business from the inside out. Visit their website at www.themarketingnutswithaz.com for a client list, case studies, and some amazing free resources to get you started down the path of success. Hey there, Zoomers, and welcome to Social Zoom Factor. This is your host, Pam Moore. All right, today is a big day. Why, you ask? Well, let me tell you, because we have launched our brand spanking new 2016 content marketing editorial calendar template. And this is something that we do every year. We actually put quite a bit of work into it. And we provide you with a template that is in an Excel spreadsheet. So it is a template that you can use to develop and create your content editorial calendar for all of 2016. And it even includes November and December, so you can start your planning now. And you can even enter the content you already did if it's part of your content framework for November. So you have no excuse to get organized for the coming new year. And you can go download the calendar now because this podcast today is going to be focused on providing you with a little bit of an industry update of what's happening in the industry, a quick overview of content marketing, and then we are going to dive deep into the content calendar. So this is set up as a tutorial podcast to help you use your content editorial calendar template from us, okay? So go download it, go to socialzoomfactor.com slash calendar, and then you will be provided with that template and we use Infusionsoft for email marketing. And so the downloads are always right underneath my signature and just click on that link and it'll download automatically to your device and it is in an Excel format. So you're going to want to make sure you're able to open and view and use that type of document, Microsoft Excel. It will work on Mac, Windows PCs, anything that will run Microsoft Excel. Before we start to define what is content marketing and that type of thing, I want to tell you that I have a ton of resources around the topic of content marketing. And it's something that our agency does on a daily basis for our day job jobs with all of our clients. And we work with clients from startups, well-funded startups, solo entrepreneurs, all the way up to enterprise and fortune 10 brands. And we help them with digital, social, and content strategies. Now, any of these types of strategies like content and social and digital, what branding, whatever you're doing, it should be part of one integrated plan. There's no such thing that any smart marketer should be doing that you only have a content strategy or you only have a digital strategy or you only have a promotion strategy. Everything needs to come together. So if this is the first time you're hearing one of my podcasts, I'm going to highly encourage you to check out the other 188 episodes that we have. You can download any of those from socialzoomfactor.com, from pammarketingnut.com, from our agency site at The Marketing Nuts with a Z, and all of the episodes are also on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and SoundCloud. So I encourage you to subscribe there. If you have an iPhone device, an Android device, you're going to be able to listen to any of those podcasts from your own device, from your own laptop, whatever you're using. So 
episodes that are going to be of interest to you. I'm going to just give you a few. Number one is episode 50, content marketing in a nutshell. That is a nice, succinct overview of what is content marketing. Episode seven helps you put together your content marketing framework and plan. Episode 167, we talk in detail about evergreen content marketing. And if you're not doing evergreen content marketing, you should. Episode eight, we talk about the inventory worksheet. And within the spreadsheet that you're going to download, the content calendar, there's also an inventory worksheet that's going to help you organize your content and leverage what you have. Then episode 30 goes into more detail on that and helping you really maximize the ROI of all of your content with doing more with less and doing more with what you already have. Then episode 185 is seven tips to create more discoverable content that humans, search engines, and the social network search engines are going to love. 173 talks about seven metrics to know if your audience values your content marketing. And then last but not least, we have episode 131, which is 10 tips to create more more shareable content, which is really important, right? Because we want people to share our content with their audiences because it's all about the OPC, baby, other people's content, other people's community. So the better your content is, the more people are going to want to share it with their audience. Did you know that only 30% of B2B marketers say that their organizations are effective at content marketing? And this is down from 38% last year. So this is coming from the Content Marketing Institute. Effectiveness levels are greater among, among respondents with documentation, clarity around success, good communication and experience, okay? The best thing you can do is is start to document your plans. You can't keep everything in your head and expect to be able to execute, you know, like a a well-tuned orchestra, right? You have to put a little bit of elbow grease into this. Top three goals for content marketing are 59% say lead generation, 43% say thought leadership, market education, and 40% say brand awareness. 67% of B2B buyers rely more on content to research and make B2B purchasing decisions than they did a year ago. Can you believe that? That comes from the demand gen report. And then according to Altimeter Group, 70% of marketers lack a consistent or integrated content strategy. And that does not surprise me at all, uh, given the clients that we work with. I Many people will say they have a content strategy, but when you really get down to it, it's like it's in their head, right? They know what they want to do. They kind of have a plan, but they really don't have a strategy for how things like visual and text and audio and video are all coming together under one plan. CMOs, and this is according to IDC, CMOs at the largest technology companies report that building out content marketing as an organizational competency is the second most important initiative only behind measuring ROI. Okay, that's huge. And then we have 51% of B2B marketers indicate that they are going to increase their content marketing spending in the next 12 months. Are you one of those? And if you are looking at tapping into this market, okay, it's a huge market. The marketing software market is expected to grow to more than 32.3 billion in 2018. It will be one of the fastest growing areas in high tech with a compound annual growth rate of 12.4%. And that is according to IDC. All right, so let's put this content marketing thing in a nutshell. And the truth is that every marketer, consultant, agency, tweeter, Facebooker around seems to be talking about content marketing, right? Go do a Google search and you'll see hundreds of thousands of blogs on the topic. However, unfortunately, very few of them have ever actually put together their own content marketing plan or have any real measurable results that they can show you or or proof that how they're going to be able to help you. So if you are working with a consultant and agency, be sure that you look behind that little magic curtain. Do they have a blog of their own? When is the last time they actually wrote good content? Who is writing their content? Is anyone reading the content? Is the content getting shared? Is it integrated with the rest of their business or is it a, you know, content band-aid add-on that they're putting on the side of the business? When is the last time that they sent an email to their list? Are they doing that regularly? 
Are they just collecting names and, you know, keeping them on the back shelf? Do they have a calendar or any rhyme or reason as to why and how they are using content marketing? Because if they aren't doing it for themselves, the chances are they're going to have a hard time doing it for you. And I know sometimes we get so busy that there are things that we may not do so good for ourselves, but we do it for our clients. I know that happens. But content marketing should not be one of them. And I would be very careful if you are looking to outsource the development of some of your content, because we have actually had quite a few agencies come to us lately trying to sell us their services, these smaller agencies, and they're offering, you know, 12 blog posts for $100 or $200 in a month. And we find out they're offshoring that content, right? It's written by people that can hardly speak English. So if it seems too good to be true, chances are that it is. So just I want to tell you to make sure you do your research if you're looking for third party help to build your content marketing strategy. So let's define content marketing. And I have two definitions here. The first one is from Wikipedia. And the second one is from Content Marketing Institute. According to Wikipedia, content marketing is an umbrella term encompassing all marketing formats that involve the creation and sharing of content in order to engage current and potential consumer bases. Content marketing subscribes to the notion that delivering high quality, relevant, and valuable information to prospects and customers drives profitable consumer action. You know, if you listen to this podcast, we talk a lot about inspiring action. Content marketing has benefits in terms of retaining reader attention and improving brand loyalty. So some keywords that stuck out to me there, engage, high quality, relevant, valuable, profitable action, retaining attention and brand loyalty. Sound like things we want to do in marketing and business, right? Okay, according to Content Marketing Institute, content marketing is a marketing technique of creating and distributing relevant and valuable content to attract, acquire, and engage a clearly defined and understood target audience with the objective of driving profitable customer action. Some of the same keywords, right? And notice they talk about knowing your audience, which we spend a ton of time on this podcast. And I encourage you to also go download our audience analysis worksheet. If you do not know your audience and you do not have a plan in 2016 and beyond of how you are going to connect with your prioritized audiences, what they need from you, you need to go download the worksheet and and complete that in combination with the content calendar you're working on because you must absolutely know your audience. Otherwise, it's all for nothing. So go to socialzoomfactor.com slash audience. I know we're getting deep into some content here, but we need to hear a few words from our sponsors because they are what keeps this podcast Zooming. So please give them a listen and I'll be right back. Would you like to get your business Zooming Turbo online, but don't know where to start? Is website development not your thing? Check out HostGator.com for all of your hosting needs. They have easy one-click WordPress installs or drag and drop website builders. If you need even more help, their website design, setup, SEO, and even managed services can have you Zooming in no time. We have been hosting our own and client sites at HostGator for years, and I can personally validate that their service by far beats out their competition. With one little tweet, email, or chat conversation, they are there and ready to help you Zoom or resolve any issues that may come up 24-7, 365 days of the year. HostGator has the capacity to grow with you and scale when and how you need them to without headache or costing you a fortune. Check out HostGator.com today and save 30% on new hosting packages with coupon code Zoom or simply go to socialzoomfactor.com slash HostGator. Again, that's social zoomfactor.com slash host gator. Do you ever feel stuck in a rut like your online business and social business isn't all that it could be? The Marketing Nuts Agency helps small businesses clear up to the Fortune 50 brands, provide clarity and vision for current and future programs. 
The marketing nuts believe in ROI-driven decision-making while still inspiring audiences with relevant content. From social business strategy and consultation, influencer marketing, to corporate training and workshops, and fully outsourced digital and social programs, the marketing nuts helps you prioritize your investment, impact business goals, and inspire your audience to invest in a relationship with you. To start the conversation, visit www.themarketingnuts.com with a Z.com. I'm back. Okay, let's get back to work. So when we think about content, bottom line, you want to develop content that inspires and connects with your audience with a goal of bringing them closer to you and your brand. You want them to click, to double click, to share and come back for more on a continuous basis. You want them to find such high value in your content that they simply can't get that somewhere else. Or it's so entertaining. It's so inspiring. Maybe they love your edginess of you always providing your opinion or they love the industry perspective you're able to provide. Find that niche, find that that edge that makes your content unique and above that of all of your competition. And that is you know, what's going to keep people coming back for more time and time again. So there you have content marketing in a nutshell. I don't want to go too deep on that today because the purpose of this podcast is really to make sure that we have time to dig into the template and help you get started on using that content calendar. Okay, so when you open up your content editorial calendar template, you will see many sheets within the Excel spreadsheets. You're going to see many different pages. It starts at November 2015 all the way to December 2016. So you have your entire year. And then the last sheet within the spreadsheet is actually the content inventory worksheet. And I will make sure to include a link on the show notes page for this episode to the podcast that goes with that as well. But that's a great resource too, to help you do an inventory of all the content that you already have so that you can make sure you're leveraging it. And that's really where you get that ROI leverage as you start to put your content calendar together. Because it's not just about creating all new content every single month. You really want to focus on, that's why you'll see once you start to dig into the calendar. There's a focus on themes and social conversations and and having, you know, quarterly, monthly, weekly themes so you can start to create, you know, some of those one pinnacle piece of content that you can then reuse over and over again. So you can take one marquee presentation for example and create, you know, 20 blog posts out of it and some videos out of it and, you know, 20 podcasts out of it. So I have done a ton of Uh, developed a ton of resources and education around these topics. So I encourage you to check those out. But once you start digging into this spreadsheet, you're going to see it broke down by month. And then when you look at each month, every monthly sheet within the template is the same. Okay. Except for the dates are different because it's broke down for you by actual day. So there it's broke down by, by month and then it's broke down by week and then it's broke down by day. And for every month you have a theme. Okay. So you want to decide what is the theme for that month? What is the theme for that week? What is that tone of my conversation going to be? What's the sentiment of that conversation going to be? What are the the content topics that I'm going to want to be driving? What are the conversations that I want to be having? And I don't want you to just be thinking about, you know, how am I going to blast my content to the world so everybody will click and I will get a ton of blog traffic. Remember, blog visitors, website visitors to your blog or your website or any platform that you own or you don't own, they're vis- they're, they're visitors, they're tourists, they're people who are coming by to check it out. It is up to you to make sure that you are developing content that they want to devour, content that they want to stick around and listen to and watch and engage with, visual content that is inspiring to them, that is going to inspire them to take action. Our goal is much more about quality than it is about quantity. And that's a really important thing for you to think about because many clients, when we start working with them, they're like, great, now that we have a calendar, we can just produce a ton and ton of content. Yes, we need to have the right quantity of content and we need to make sure we're keeping the right pulse and drumbeat going with relevant and fresh content that's contextual for our audience. However, we also need to make sure that it is high quality. 
I'd rather have you do five to 10 marquee great pieces than I would have you do a hundred that is just throwing, you know, social content spaghetti on the wall and hoping it sticks and it looks, sounds, smells, and feels like everything your competitors are doing. You're better off putting effort into a smaller number of really good quality pieces. Okay. So when you're thinking about your themes, this should be something that's taking you time. Shouldn't be something that you just throw up there and you say, okay, here's what we're going to do. December, January, February, March, April, May, June, right? No, you want to slow down to speed up, invite other people within your organization. If you're in a small company, that's going to be pretty easy. Maybe you want to invite some partners, some stakeholders, maybe the owner of your company, if you are the owner, but get some input, get some ideas. This is where you can, you know, get a whiteboard and start to throw up some ideas and, and think about how can you make this content fresh? What are the themes? What is the the pulse? I like to use the analogy drumbeat. What is the drumbeat of my content over the coming year? Drum beat one, what are we talking about? Drum beat two, what are we talking about? We, because we want there to be a pulse. We want it to be music. We want it to be something that is continuous, that people are continually waiting and wanting more, okay? So you're gonna have the monthly theme, you're gonna have the weekly theme, and then you're going to have social conversation themes for each of those. So you may have a theme overall of a particular topic, and then you wanna break it down by week of what is that social conversation conversation theme. So you may be doing a series, you know, like right now we're doing a lot around content marketing, but each week I have specific conversations I'm wanting to drive on the social web, on my blog, through my podcast, through our email marketing. Okay. Then you have, and now I'm going through the columns on the spreadsheet. Then we have the blog post title. So this is really important. And I encourage you to check out the episode I just did on how to test your own marketing, utilizing social media. Media, and I really encourage you to do that. Okay. Social media gives us so much opportunity to test our own marketing. So before you go put together an entire campaign, test a couple headlines, send a couple tweets out. And particularly if you have a following on Twitter, if you have built a community on any of the other social networks like Facebook or Instagram, it's a great way for you to test that campaign themes and the headlines. So put some time and effort into those blog post titles. And there's lots of tools out there we can use to also see how our content is going to, you know, fare in the market, whether it's a saturated type of uh, keywords we're using or what, how can we make that unique? And if you need help with that, that's something our agency can help you with very easily. And then you have your audiences. So you have your target, your primary audience for the piece of content. You have your secondary audience and then you have your tertiary audience. Okay. So those are your going to be, what are the top three audiences who you're wanting to read, engage, listen, um, and be activated by that content. Then we have our author. So that's the person who actually wrote the content. And then you may have an editor. So somebody who on your team who was responsible for editing, because a lot of people, there are some authors who like to write, but they are not that good of editors, right? And so I always like on our team to encourage people to provide content, but we always make sure there's an editor that looks at that content. We do the same thing for our clients, right? Editing skills are a lot of times different than people who are doing idea generation and, and who are great at just, you know, throwing some great, amazing, innovative content together, but they may not be a great editor. So note who is that author, who is the editor. And then the next column is the purchase cycle. So where is are you targeting? Where is this user, this reader, this listener, this customer, where are they at in a relationship with you? Are they aware of your product and brand? Are they considering a purchase? Um, maybe engaging further? Or do they have a preference for you? Have they already purchased it? Or are they a loyal customer? Are you wanting to retain them as a customer? So awareness, consideration, preference, purchase and loyalty. Those are very, very different um, goals and objectives and you need to know where they are in that purchase cycle. Then we have the date draft due. So when is the first draft due? Then we have two to three keywords and these are keywords that are going to drive and support that theme. And there also may be keywords that you're going to want to leverage for social media optimization and search engine optimization. Okay, minimum of two to three. And I really want to make sure you're prioritizing these. You may need to have more. You may need five to 10 keywords, but make sure at minimum, you know, you know, two to three keywords that you want to be driving for that particular piece. Then we have categories. So this would be categories for your blog. How are you organizing content? So what blog 
category does this fall under in regard to your content? Could be on your Facebook page, could be, you know, on your website. Where does it fit? Then we have image location. So this would be any image that is attached to that piece of content. Where can I go find that image? Because the last thing you want to do is particularly when you have multiple people, multiple hands uh, working inside of your content strategy and content execution is wasting time with people looking for things. Okay. So if you know you're going to be using a specific image, make sure you link to it. If it's in a Dropbox folder, make sure you link to it. If it's in a Google doc, link to it. Okay. Put a link to wherever it is. So whoever is putting that content together can find it. Then we have supporting media. So this could be video. This could be podcast. This could be maybe a live stream out on Periscope or um, you're doing a blab or a Google hangout include that link as well. And then we have, um, the next column is embed and resource kit. Yes or no. So I've talked a lot about lately. Hopefully you've heard some of these podcasts where I talk a lot about putting multiple pieces of content into a resource kit. So you could have, you know, the content marketing resource kit, which you're going to see us launch later this week. Uh, that here, I'm just noting, yes, this piece of content is going to be inside a resource kit or yes, it may already be there. And if it's there, you know, include a link, include the title, whatever makes sense for you. Then we have syndication. So this would be, where are you wanting this content to be syndicated. You can also use this once it already has been syndicated. You can come back and update this content calendar and note there where it was syndicated. So we do that with a lot of our clients, but it's syndication basically means where else is the content being published. And um, hopefully you have a content syndication strategy where you are, you know, you have specific goals and objectives and target platforms where you're wanting your content to get syndicated. If you don't know how to do that, go ahead and give us a call call an agency or consultant that can help you because it really can help you uh, drive exponential success and ROI with your content with the right syndication strategy. Then we have possible white paper. So is this a bigger resource? Is it going to be a marquee type of piece of content? Is this going to be included in there? And so this is really good if you're doing influencer marketing type of content. Uh, Maybe you have a few influencers you're working with and you're you're doing a series of blog posts that are then going to be part of a, a white paper. That's a good example. Or maybe you have some thought leaders in your industry or you've done some research and you're breaking it down in a couple different uh, podcasts or blog posts, then you're going to put it in one big white paper. Okay. Then we have include testimonials and graphics. Yes or no. So if you are including um, a case study or something coming from a client and a testimonial or graphics, include that there. And then last but not least, we have call to action. And that is probably one of the most important columns we have in this spreadsheet. It is knowing what is your call to action. So here you can put a link to that call to action. There could be more than one call to action. And you just want to make sure you know what it is, you know what your objectives are and where you're driving that. So there you have it in a nutshell. That is the content marketing editorial calendar template. Go download it at socialzoomfactor.com slash calendar. Make sure you check out our other resources. We have a ton of resources on content, on branding, on social, on digital, on measuring your results. Everything is out there for you. Go listen to iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud. Check out socialzoomfactor.com where all of our podcasts are are located. And then we have blog post recaps there as well as on my personal blog at pammarketingnut.com and our agency blog and team at the Marketing Nuts with the z.com is always ready and excited to help you out. So I hope that I have inspired you for the coming year and that you are ready to go rock your content in 2016. Please let me know if you like this, go leave us a review on iTunes, come tweet to me, use the hashtag social zoom factor. Have an amazing rest of your year in 2016. That's a wrap. If you're ready to Zoom your business and Zoom your life, then don't let the end of this episode be the end of your journey. Visit socialzoomfactor.com slash Zoom for incredible free resources and guides. And be sure to join the Social Zoom Factor mailing list so you never miss an episode. We'll see you next time on Social Zoom Factor.